an F9 F Panther in 48 hours, we've only gone and done it right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Yes, today I am building the F9F Panther in 148 scale from Revel. The build took just under 48 hours. It was part of the 48 in 48 birthday bash in aid of Model Sea Heroes organized by the Model Officers Mess. If you didn't catch it, you can catch up on all the sessions on YouTube. Here is the kit I managed to make in 48 hours. Very happy with it indeed. So, if you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the like button below. If you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they crop up. And of course, if you want to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks, through becoming a channel member, or through any of my online partner programs. On with the build then, do please remember that I was doing this live with a webcam as well as my normal camera. It may not look quite as well cut and as beautifully edited as I hope it normally is, but bear with it. We managed to make a beautiful aeroplane. Hope you enjoy the video. Right, so first stages are to build the cockpit as usual. So what I've done, the Ejection seat comes as two sides and a backing. And then there's a small filler piece at the top. Okay, so four pieces for, the, pieces for the seat. That then sits into this single piece cockpit tub here, which is fine, it goes in really easily. The control column sits here. Um, what I found was I had to make absolutely sure this, was, this um, seat was close to the middle because the hole for the column down here is actually quite large, so that means it needs to be absolutely in the right place for the control column to go in properly. The rudder bars are here, that's quite a big part. Um, I found if you're going to put the pilot in, you might actually want to just not have that. Uh, it, the feet do get under it, or the feet have to tuck underneath it. And then there's the instrument panel here. Um, what I found on this, I'll try and show you, is that it has to sit at a certain angle, and that angle isn't actually set when you put the when you put the thing together. So what I found was useful was um, put it in as if as if we're about to fit it. I can see up at this end, it's really not very well put. To, this this actually isn't not well put together, considering how well the rest of the kit is done. This bit is actually pretty poor. The fit of this is actually pretty rubbish. Um, there we go, it's about there. You can hopefully see here, there's a little tab and that's the, the instrument panel has to fit against that tab. So I sort of put this in place eventually and just pushed this to it's the right angle. It's, it's not like 90 degrees off the, the line of the combing or anything. It's kind of, Actually, it's probably about 90 degrees to the bottom. So let's see if we can... Yeah. You can see it's roughly 90 degrees to, to the line of this. So that's a good reference if you can't, you know, if you're having trouble, like me, putting that into the um, side to test it. Just, uh, yeah, that's 90 degrees there. So that's how you set that. Um, I've also taken a pilot figure off. I'm going to prime that, just cleaned him up. Um, there's quite a lot of, there still are a few um, little seam lines here that need to be cleaned off. Uh, he's got an arm separately so that when he goes into the cockpit he can set his arm correctly to be holding the control column. Um, I've taken off and cleaned up the fuselage halves. Those need to be primed as well. Um, no, I'm just going to give everything a prime now. I've, I've done what I need to do so I'll give everything a prime. 
and uh, take it from there. Oh, the other thing I've done is I've put my canopy masks on. Uh, these are these are done in two stages. So there's the first stage here where the masks are a little bit smaller as an inside line on the hood, for example. Then you spray the <laughs> interior colour in, which is black. Um, put uh, a coat of varnish over it as well to bind it in. Leave it until it's really, really well set. So prime it in black, paint it in black. Actually, no, just prime it in black. You don't need to paint it in black, just prime it in black. And then a coat of uh, varnish over it to seal it in. Then you can take these... Um, masks off and there's another set of masks that are slightly bigger that go around this out this line here uh, it actually covers this and then you, the camouflage colour goes on the, that so the effect will be there's a black line around the inside of the camouflage colour and this, this will be black as well ok so that, that's the same for the front front the these panels there's a slightly bigger version um, I don't think there's a slightly bigger version of the uh, windscreen there might be but we'll have a look at that in a minute when, when we get around to doing it so spray all of those and I will come back later when that's done okay I'm going to do sort of a bit of dry brushing in the uh, can of cockpit tub now um, a few people have asked about dry brushing so what I've got is I've got like an old old brush and it's quite feathery. I'm just loaded up a li tiny little bit of white paint. And this I'm using for this. I'm trying to get it over here. Uh, some game colour. It's it's quite thick white paint. All right. I think the thickness is quite useful. If you have really really thin paint, I don't think it works as well. So some relatively thick paint, but really just a tiny amount, and just work it off. On here, just sort of don't take most of it off on on something else on the support, or if you're doing this on the sprue on on the frame, just on the sprue itself. Have a go. Just when you think there's nothing left, then start washing over your black, and you will find it will pick up the tiniest bits of white, and between the white, between the raised bits. It will just feather onto the black and it will just bring the black up a bit as well. Um, cockpit black is really actually all that black. It gets warm, you know. And you know, but it, within seconds, you've got something that's actually not, not too bad looking. Don't overdo it, all right? But if you do overdo it, of course, what you can do is just go over and paint it over again. But don't put too much paint on. Remember, just keep brushing it on whatever surface you got. And then only just leaving some paint. Then, very lightly, I mean really lightly, brush it over the surface you want to dry brush. And it gets all those corners of all the instruments. This is going to look so much better than the decals. Now, what you can obviously what you can do is do this first, then put the decals over for the colours of the actual instruments. But I don't bother with that. I use the decals as a colour chart to tell me if there's any like bits that need red or white or whatever, and then I'll put them in myself. But that's dry brushing. I think um, you can also, by the way, you can then use a. I'll show you. You can you can use like the toothpick or something like that just to get some pick out some of these highlights, some of these instruments. But other than that, that's it, dry brushing. I think it, it especially at a scale like 148, it does absolute wonders. Okay, so when we finish messing around, um, I've brushed up everything inside there. And I've given the seat back a little bit of a wash of a dark green to make it look very dark green. I've put in a couple of spots of colour and uh, the initiator handle down here. Uh, in red, not too much colour, but just like tiny little spots here and there, just to brighten it up a bit. But I think it looks cool. So what I've done with the pilot here is I've given him um, a sort of darkish green flying suit, yellow May West life jacket, um, khaki straps, 
and just done a bit of highlighting bits and bits of shadow and bits of line of few touches of metal a little bit of um, wash on some of this just to bring a bit more shading in giving him a the white helmet painted on a red chevron or a red triangle as well. Um, obviously the arm here is um, separate. That's over here. I've painted on a couple of like um, dud squadron badges on the, you know, made, made up just sort of little blocky things. You remember this is 48th so it's going to be viewed from quite a way away. So it's all about splashes of colour, splashes of uh, sort of suggestion of colour really. So I'll just, just finish off a, a few more highlights on the flesh and that'll be done. So I can stick the pile in as well. I just glue, glued around the back of him here. Um, and it sticks in. So all I've got to do now is put in the arm onto the control column. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this at that. Um yep. Kind of in the right place. Kinda of looking right. Yeah, that'll do me. That'll do me. This kit has got some lovely things to it, but it's also got some really dumb things to it. And one dumb thing is having to fit this nose wheel section so early on in the build. And one that sticks out like that, that's, I mean, that's just absolutely crazy that it sticks out like that. But then, you know, there's, there's another way of doing it. Right? I don't know if I can put that, if I put this section in, I don't know if I could then put this in later. I might have been able to, but yeah, I'll see how we go. Here's the uh, exhaust pipe, the J exhaust, and the turbine goes at the back. Now, this is a really stupid piece of design, because do you know what? If you want that to go at the back, have this as a straight tube and have it just go into an end cap it would just be so much easier but no we need it to go down all the way down there i guess whatever anyway so it sits somewhere down at the bottom i don't, don't know if you can see it at all well let's see if we can bring it closer to the light maybe no no you can't see that whatever so there it, it there is it is in there somewhere. Okay, the arrestor hook and bump guard go in here. And the exhaust sits in here, like so. Now the cockpit section goes up here. Yeah, I guess so. The uh, nose wheel section, really annoying nose wheel section. This nose wheel section goes in here. Oh, sorry, like that. So it's like a, there's a tab and it's this, this front step that sits inside that tab. And then all of that sits down onto the Onto the, oh, do you know what, it's really not good. There you go. Like that, there you go, like that. <sighs> yeah, not happy with this really. Okay, now, it says we've got to add some weight to this, um, 20 grams of weight. I'll do that in a moment. What I'm going to probably do is put some up here and on the other side, and then some at the back here. I'm going to let this dry a little bit first. For nose weight, I'm going to use these um, 5 gram cycle weights, so I've got one on each side. Actually, no, I could put two on each side, like this. They're self-adhesive and um, iron, so they're going to stick in place. Oh, they're going to stick in place, and oh, I should better get one more in there. 
I put one on the back here as well. I'll put another one on the front front here and maybe another one there. Give it 25 in total. That will definitely make it sit on its nose. Okay, and the whole other side can go on now. And just clip them all together and then start taping everything up. Right, the inlets go on the inside of the wings like this. The lower wing goes in like so and the fit is remarkably good. I must remember to take this tape off as well. Then we put the top wing skins on, tape everything up, extra thin cement all around and leave it to dry. Now for some unknown reason they leave this raised piece here of text on the underside of your elevator so you just do need to sand that off. What a silly thing to do. So to make sure the <coughs> upper surfaces of the wings bonds to the fuselage just put a bit of tape over across to tension it. Brings up the dihedral to the right angle then these pieces of the wings will meet the fuselage properly. Now in the instructions as you can see um, they provide these cut out things to sort of imitate the camera lenses which is fine except as you can see they're considerably larger than the holes and the ports so that's useless. So what I've done is I've used some of the bits of the the frames and made a few cameras. There's one more to do, um, maybe one more to do for this one. And then what I'll do is just put a, a bit of uh, chrome or something like that on top, just a ring of chrome, a blob of chrome, um, to simulate the camera lenses. Then I'll stick them onto the back here. And then of course this is all gonna be sprayed anyway, the rest of it. So hopefully that will kind of look like cameras. Here's hoping. There we go. Okay, so they don't look much now, but they will look like cameras when they're in the plane. Okay, so you can see that once the grass has gone and been painted and all that, this is what we look are looking at in terms of cameras. They're okay. I mean, there's, there's better ways of doing it, I'm sure, but when you've only got 48 hours to do the whole build, there it is. That's the side. These are the ones that are built in. Um, it's just a, a depression in the moulding here, and you, I just put some chrome paint into there, and then put the um, the glass on. That seemed to work quite nicely. But yeah, there's probably better ways of doing it, but they'll do for me. The undercarriage on this is actually relatively straightforward. You've got a main leg here that goes straight into the bottom of the wing here. That's actually quite a firm fit. The second thing you do is add the side door here and there's a, I don't know if we can still see it, just in here there's a, a small tab on the wheel here that fits into a hole on the door. You have to push the door down into the recess to get that in place and then finally there's the door opening strut here that sits up against a, a hole in here. The connection on the body isn't all that clear. There is like a little post here. So what I've done is I've put it into the hole that is it on the door and then just put it on top of that post. The post is, I'll see if we can see it, can't really see it, it's right under here. This piece goes on last. So because you need to set that uh, point there, you need to set this anchor point here, do all of those, do it both sides and then you fit this panel which kind of covers the two of them. The nose gear is very straightforward because that's already built on as we saw, um, it just has this little elbow thing that attaches to it, obviously the wheel goes on. The more challenging thing are the doors, the doors here come these long um, strut type things here 
they go either side of this little blob here on the inside of the wheel well and that sets these angles really well then there is a a supporting strut here a v-shaped strut that goes in as well but that's cool and then the air brakes very very simple each air brake comes with these two huge tabs they fit into the front wall of the air brake well and then you've got the operating rams they just sit into a depression at the back here and then sit into the back of the air brake there very very straightforward indeed for the cockpit um, it's you know pretty easy going the windshield just sits on the canopy is here I kept I did I put that on or did I not do you know what I think I put that on anyway the um, canopy has this insert in the back here which goes on black like black plastic insert just fine the thing about the canopy if you're using masks you'll get two sets of masks firstly there's one that enables you to do the black liner then that you need to varnish and let it really set well then you can mask the rest of it off and do the top color so that leaves you with this black liner it's a thing that's done on a lot of other kits like um i think that the current typhoon you know the um eads typhoon certainly the buccaneer has this sort of thing going on and the decals these are a real problem if you haven't got microset and microsol or their equivalent so setting solution and a solvent this is going to be an absolute nightmare because plain water is not going to do it this is one decal that goes goes all the way around here and you've got um you've got diameter changes you've got to fit round fitments you this took a lot of microset and microsol to get it to conform to the and even now I, I keep going around and noticing little creases um it took a long time to conform to the surface um but it does it just takes an awful long time to do it and when you're up against the clock that's not your friend when you've got time to do it it will get there the same with the nose band here that's a, that, these are these are two decals there's a split line along here so there's one for this half one for that half again it just takes time to finesse it around the window here and then into place underneath as well but it does get there in the end and the markings i was worried that in the decal sheet the markings were particularly bright blue well of course what they actually do also is supply you with decals that don't have any blue at all they're clear and so you have the red and the white and then they you know the blue is the blue of the aircraft so that's really cool the decals are quite big they do need again a lot of microset and microsol um, you will have to keep letting them dry and keep going over them to get the sort of silvering to set down a bit um, and to get the like the right look to them but it's okay it's good they're good it's it's really good that they're there and you know what? they look nice they're very nicely printed There it is, the Grumman Panther built in just 48 hours. Now there's a few bits I haven't done yet that just need tidying up. Uh, a few bits of paint here and there, a few, one or two stencils that need going on. But generally speaking, this is done. Um, I've really enjoyed the build. I've really enjoyed the experience of building it for the 48 and 48 uh, group build. Um, so I'll be looking out for more group builds to do as time goes on. Very nice kit went together well you can tell it's it's got uh the monogram heritage the decals are challenging but with the, the right decal solutions they do come into play and i enjoyed painting a figure for once which was fun so there we are uh if you're thinking about buying the kit yeah i'd recommend one 
it's, it's a lovely kit of a very, very good and important aircraft. There we go then, the Grumman Panther, a lovely aeroplane. Um, you know, classic piece of early design for jet aircraft. Very, very nice indeed. Lovely kit. Can't go wrong, I don't think. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the like button. Blokers, every like helps. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future build videos, which I promise will be a bit more comprehensive than this, and all the other videos I release on my channel as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Goodbye now.